there's a wonder and a beauty to having God speak with you when you know his voice, when you hear it, and when you simply recognize that the love that you've always wanted or desired and tried to fill with either extreme sports, you could say, or, you know, lust, or a relationship, or a wife, or a child, or any other activity with which you participated in, whether it be sensuality, or drug addictions, or any other addiction, or alcohol, or anything that you've tried to mask the fulfillment of your entire life, those things are just hiding the reality of you being a complete person, the complete feeling of all of your emotions, that you could have a wealth of experience that would go beyond just the partial, you know, one minute you've got a sugar rush and the next minute you've got a sugar downer or the one minute you've got a you know alcoholic high and the next minute you've got an alcoholic downer <laughs> or you know in the old days when they used to say that you know oh wow you know i'm i'm like tripping you know well you're tripping high and then one minute and the next minute guess what you're tripping way low so the reality is is that if you want to and once you do experience a complete filling of your life to the maximum of what your body could experience with your entire body, soul, and spirit, that's what God meant by abundant life. He meant that he would fill you to completeness, that you would experience things beyond your imagination of what you think you can feel, touch, hear, or see. It goes so far beyond that that we are the ones sometimes that stop and quit before God has completed that which he's going to do eventually in eternity. Why stop? Jesus said, I only speak of those earthly things that you don't seem to understand right now. And since you don't even accept what I talk about earthly, how will you accept those things if I talk about heavenly things? And you know, that should be our desire is to find out what Jesus would have said and wants to tell us about heavenly things. You know, we, we pretend like we know so much and yet every day we experience something new. We learn something different than what we were told. We find out that a fact that we thought we had been assured of is no longer that certain. And that's part of the process of learning. It's part of the process of God revelation to us that he wants us to incorporate in our lives, that we need to learn, we need to apply the scriptures as he teaches them to us, because he created us. So if we go along with him explaining to us, then we become filled and fulfilled in our purpose of being. Isn't that what you want, to be overwhelmingly overflowing, being a complete being? In streams in the desert, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Does the word come like a soft shower, assuaging the fury of the flame? Yes, it is not an asbestos armor against which the heat has no power. Let the affliction come. God has chosen me. Poverty, thou mayest stride at my door, but God is in the house already, and he has chosen me. Sickness, thou mayest intrude, but I have a balsam ready. God has chosen me. Whatever befalls me in this veil of tears, I know that he has chosen me. Fear not, Christian. Jesus is with thee. In all thy fiery trials, his presence is both thy comfort and thy safety. He will never leave one whom he has chosen for his own. Fear not, for I am with thee is a sure word of promise to his chosen ones in the furnace of affliction. Whenever there is doubt, 
whenever there's fear or anxiety of you failed in some way or you think that you couldn't do it and somehow you think that God's going to cast you away or you've gone way off backsliding and you think that, guess what, you know, <laughs> he can't take me back and I've already blown it. No. You were already saved. That's the point. You're the one that's just making the mistake. He didn't. When he chose you, he said, I will perfect that which is in you to the accomplishing of my will, not your will. Now, you can go off and play the games that you think you want to play and suffer the consequences of those things that you do that you know you should not do. And they are consequential. You think you get away with it for a little while, but in the end, you wind up paying the piper, paying the price. Like they say, the chickens come home to roost. Well, it really means you reap what you sow. And the whole idea of karma and good, bad, no. You reap what you sow. Jesus said it. So, when God said he chose you and he has decided that you are his, guess what? You are the one learning to respect his choice, not he respects your choice to go off on a tangent or to go do your own thing. No, that's not what the Son of God, the Son of Man would do. He would save you to the uttermost. And knowing that, doesn't that bring comfort? That God will save you to the uttermost because he chose you? When you sin, look around. Do you really think that it's only affecting you? Or are you beginning to realize that when you sin, it hurts everyone else around you and that you're learning to appreciate the fact that the consequences aren't just upon you because God is with you but it's upon every single person around you that you influence and that will change your life I would say why do it why indeed